Hi and welcome to another repaint video. This time it's the next team and namely Sencha, so green tea. I just bought a green tea named Arctic Wolf and I am slightly obsessed with it. It's super tasty. From one thing to another, I recently reached 7777 followers, which is a mouthful to say, but it reminded me of one time at Bandcamp, true story, where a couple of Americans wore t-shirts that said this. This is 7777 in Swedish and is pronounced 7700. Apparently the pronunciation sounds weird. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for, well, everything. The following, the likes and the super kind comments. They made my day. I'm thinking of painting them out and making a collage, a wall of kindness somewhere in the house. You never know when it's needed, you know? Anyway, let's craft. So I started with this broken cup. It arrived in this state after I bought it secondhand online and it came inside a box with like one flat sheet of newspaper. I think I explained better how I do this kintsugi in my Darjeeling video. First I sand the edges to give the paint something to stick to, then I glue the pieces together. Next I rub the excess glue in circles. Then I use acetone to remove it. I really love fixing broken things. Mending objects is, you know, soothing for the soul. I have two different gold paints and I decided on the yellow one, then I carefully painted the cracks but my patience ran thin so, well yeah, so I saved it with acetone. Dragging it gently across the cracks leaves the paint where it's supposed to be, works fairly well. Then I seal the inside with some nail polish because no one likes uncured resin leaking all over the place, been there done that, had to throw away the t-shirt. So I used this doll with broken legs and a weird greenish brown skin tone. I realized the head was loose, the vinyl was broken, so she got a replacement head from another broken doll. I've got a bunch of those. I prepared the doll by cutting off the hair close to the scalp, scraping it with a flat screwdriver and removing the ears. I thought of using them, but I didn't. Then make an incision to take the glue and hair wrists out. I know most customizers pull it out from the neck hole, but my wrist scoffs at that idea and boy was there a lot of glue inside the head. Big chunks. Then I remove the paint and flocking with 100% acetone. Next I glue the head shut. I wanted to seal the holes left from the ears and glue pieces of fabric onto them. Of course this doesn't work if you do a reroute, but I am gluing, so all is fine. Then I gave the face some base blushing using my airbrush. I went in with orange because it contrasts with her skin tone and makes the face up pop. After a coat of MSC, she's ready for some watercolor pencils. I start making a white base and then work around with darker colors. I am adding more blush and working even more on the white. It's hard to make it brighter. It takes a good pencil and patience. If I remember correctly, this is my current dash, my absolute favorite. Ooh, and I used a Q-tip instead of a pencil to make the blush softer. Next layer, I start with eyebrows so I can shape them without messing with the blush. I use an eraser pencil for precision, but you know, a cut eraser does the same thing. Before the next layer, I tried making the iris yellow, then continued after another coat of MSC. I drew the pupils like lost signs or whatever. Then I tried using pastels before the eyebrows got some defined strands in black and white. Here I'm trying to give the iris more color, I had a hard time with it, then more orange on the lips before MSC. Nearing the end I work more on highlight and black lines. More pastel inside the eyes, then some grey to shadow the eye white. Ooh, time for some acrylics! It's almost finished! It just needs some shine and highlight. Took me a couple of tries. She got the same kintsugi pattern on her face as the cup has. Then I glossed the eyes and lips before realizing it looked super flat. So I added black pastels inside the eyes and had to re-gloss them, but you know, it made such a huge difference. Done and finished and I'm happy with it. I cut off the legs since she'll be inside a cup, making it look like she's emerging from the tea. Then I blushed the hands for some reason and I mixed Colira paint with Liquitex gloss varnish to paint the fingers. That way it won't scrape off. Then I added some wires. The neat thing about this is that you can actually bend the fingers a bit and give her more different poses. Plus, it looks awesome. Time to make some paper flowers. I use this paper clay in a Ziploc bag, but it needs to be watered now and then. It's like a plant, basically. I smoosh it onto a piece of parchment paper and punch the flowers with my sugar paste punchy thing. I stick it to the plate where I want it and add more of them until I have a flower. I take them off when they've partially dried and take the opportunity to cover the green parts with gold flakes. I use Liquitex gloss varnish, add flakes, let it dry and brush excess off. Then I seal it with more gloss varnish. 
Now, while that dries, I airbrush the paper clay flowers. First, I mix greenish blue paint and give them a base coat. Then, I add white and airbrush from the top. It does give a nice effect. Then, I put blobs of glue in the middle and added nail art caviar beads. I don't know what they're called. I also cut some paper leaves that I used around the flowers. Technically, I first glue the flowers and then the leaves, but you get the point. After gluing it, I use my gloss varnish to make it shiny, and there we go much better. I'm totally jumping back and forward. I tried to edit it in a logical order, but alas, I didn't fully manage. Here I'm making the resin butterflies. I use eyeshadow and dust the mold, then pour the resin into it and cure it under the UV lamp for two minutes. I need my teammates to have common traits and the butterflies are one of them. Demolding time. I had to have the horns ready before gluing the hair, so let's make some! I first attach the wires and then bend them into a rough shape, then I hot glue them to give them more stability before I use epoxy clay. Plus, epoxy clay is super expensive compared to hot glue, and heavy. I mix two equal parts and mold them around the bases. I am using silicone sculpting tools to give them some shape. After curing for 24 hours, I can take them off the spare head and sand them a bit to smoothen the edges and give a better base for the paint. Then I mixed the same greenish blue as the airbrush paint for the flowers and finally I painted the horns. I added some white to the color and dry brushed it at the end to highlight the details. Here I add gold flakes to the inside, it gives such a nice contrast. Finally, I glossed the horns entirely. I started this series while I had my monster hunter face and they somehow remind me of Diablos. Next are clothes. I took the sleeve parts from this pattern by DJ Requiem and uh, I basically winged the rest. This is made in chaos, so hold your hat. First I made the underskirt by gathering and gluing it around her hips. She is getting submerged in resin, so there is no need for the clothes to be changeable. Lots of glue and masking tape. While the skirt was drying, I glued the two parts of the sleeves together. It's such a cute pattern. DG Requiem, they do know what they're doing. After drying, it gets sewn into a tube. We will get back to that later. The underskirt is finished and I made a second one further up, the same method. The second skirt is drying, let's get back to the sleeves. I turn them right side out and then glue them on her shoulders with super glue. Next, I worked on the top part. I made this whatever it's called. It's like ruffles for the bustier. Then I glue brown leather, super gluing all the way. I trimmed the back, and since the leather has white fabric underneath, I used brown leather by the army painter to fix that. Next, I fixed the lower part with a piece of ribbon. Unfortunately, it also did not show since the resin and skirt hit it, which is rather sad. However, I added these metal parts for the sleeves that looked super cute, plus they will actually show. And this metal thing, super nice. These, however, didn't show. The neck felt bare, so I added this faux fur. I have one of these and it's so soft and cozy. Next, I made three incisions inside the neck hole and reattached the head. I also reattached the arms and yeah, so far, so good. Then I used watered down acrylic paint to make it look more worn. Now it's tea time! I added paper clay at the bottom to fill and raise the doll. Then after drying I hot glued the doll in place. I used a paint bottle behind her back because paint make great support. Next, I mixed resin. It's not supposed to be measured by weight, but I haven't had any trouble, so I'm sticking to my pink scale. A wider mixing stick makes a lot of difference regarding bubbles. I used resin dye, some yellow, green and a bit of brown. Together, they make a pretty good green tea color. I pour it into the cup, praying there will be no leakage. Then I poke the skirt underneath the resin. I realized I had forgotten the tea label string, so I fixed that behind the camera. Then after 24 hours of curing, I got into an argument with the hair wefts. Because I thought regular glue would work, but no. I had to pin the wefts after gluing. I do not recommend this. Use hot glue or super glue or something else. She looks fabulous though at this point. I use my embossing tool to make the hair lay flat. Next, she got a headdress from some uh, paper leaves and another metal decoration. This hides the ugly hairline the wefts made. Then I added the horns, gluing them for safety. I made two braids on the sides, glued the ends, flipped them over her head and glued them there. To keep them there while drying, I used masking tape. 
I thought it all looked too dark, so I added more paper flowers to the headdress, then I added some chains. As usual, I had no plan and just added things until satisfied. I also used black pastels for the fabric to make it look less new, then I added more chains and this time on her arm plate things. The end is near and I'm gluing the butterflies, one on the saucer, one on the cup and the smallest one on the doll. Then I thought her forehead looked empty so I put a tiny butterfly charm there and lastly I added some paper flowers to her shoulders. She needs a tea label though and I burned it but it was okay and it looks pretty cool. I never drink Sencha, it reminds me too much of hay. Or maybe I just drank an old one and got traumatized, I don't know. Oh and I didn't show how this tea label looked, it does show in the pictures though but y yeah I'm sorry about that. I love making the series and I totally love all the ideas everyone has. Bubble tea, Earl Grey, Jasmine tea, Masala chai. I am probably extending the series because there are so many cool ideas and broken saucers. But it's such a wonderful thing. I tell you guys that my latest hyperfixation is insects, isopods and spiders and instead of saying ew that's disgusting, you're like you should make an insect doll. It's the best support one could have and I am so grateful for this community. Next up is YT. Um, she's actually finished. Yeah, she's finished. Uh, it it turned out cool. Ah, uh, yeah, and, and here I realized I wrote COA upside down, but I'm just rolling with it. Anyway, so this is what I started with, and this is the result. Little Sencha looks pretty kind and wholesome for being a demon. No bad vibes. Thank you so much for watching the process. I hope you're having a crazy awesome day, and uh, yeah, bye!